All right, how are you guys doing? So my name is uh, my name's Nick Bear. I own a supplement company called uh, Bear Performance Nutrition or, or BPN Supplements. Uh, it's a company I've had for about five years now. Uh, so I started it when I was a junior in college in Western Pennsylvania at the Indiana University of Pennsylvania studying nutrition. Uh, I was on an ROTC scholarship. I uh, went active duty in May of 2013, and then uh, believe it or not, yesterday was my ETS date. So. It's, it's weird when I, yeah, it's weird when Nick asked me to do this. He was like, May 21st. I was like, May, May 20th is my ETS date. Uh, so I've been on terminal leave for 40 days now. Uh, I did four years active duty infantry officer. I uh, was stationed out of Fort Hood, Texas. Um, I was lucky enough to be a platoon leader there for two years. And then, uh, unfortunately, I was put in an S3 shop for a little bit before getting out. Um, so with my company, uh, like Nick said, I went through plenty of failures. So I started it a year before going on active duty. Uh, for three years, we were at a loss. So there, we, we brought in revenue, and we were bringing in about $20,000 a year in revenue. But overhead, uh, cost of goods sold, marketing, we were spending $10,000 more than that. For so, so three years, I made no money. Um, that fourth year, we started making a little bit of money. And then uh, this past year, uh, we did about 500,000 in sales. And this year, we'll do... Um, a couple million in sales, so we're on track for uh, being a multi-million dollar company this year. So our growth over the past five, six years has been exponential. Uh, and I'm going to tell you the story about kind of how we got to be, to be in this position, uh, because by no means was it a straight, linear path of success. When I started off, I had absolutely no clue what I was doing with business, and I thought I knew everything, and uh, I was sadly mistaken. So I'm going to tell this uh, kind of this this whole story in a storytelling with small stories in between because I feel like it's a great way to convey a message and you guys can kind of understand what exactly I went through to build everything. So to start off in the beginning, like I said, I was going to school for nutrition uh, in Western Pennsylvania and the bank USAA that I'm sure a lot of you guys are familiar with, they offer a loan for, uh, for right before you commission. It's called a pre-commissioning loan. It's up to $25,000. You take this $25,000 out, and your repayment terms are like awesome. It wasn't you paid money back for like six months after commissioning with like 0% interest rate. So all my friends were taking out this money. They were buying engagement rings, wedding rings. They were going on vacations. Uh, they were buying cars. And I decided I was going to invest in my own supplement company. So I knew nothing about business, uh, but I was a nutrition major, and I was a supplement junkie. So I'm still a, a stimulant junkie, so I knew all about supplements. So I placed this order for supplements. And I spent all of that money, every single dollar, on the, the product itself. So all the, the marketing, the labels, the design, it was all done by me and my buddies. It was super amateur. Uh, there wasn't much thought process behind it. And there really wasn't much thought process behind the company in general. I just knew I wanted to start something. I wanted to build something. Um, and I had that initiative to do that. So we started the company. Uh, we placed that order. And uh, my plan was I was going to contact some YouTubers at the time. I was going to give them product for free. They were going to do a review, and I was going to make millions of dollars. And my dad was like, hey, Nick, if it's that easy, everyone would do it. And I was like hard-headed. I was like, whatever, dad, like, I'll make millions of dollars. Uh, so we get the product in after doing all this buzz that I thought I did. Um, so I dieted down. I did like a photo shoot for myself because I couldn't afford to hire someone to do it. I uh, had a buddy do the labels. I had a friend do the website, which was, like I said, extremely amateur. Um, but I was in college at the time, so all the money that I had, that $20,000, was spent on the product itself. So we get the product in, and uh, I send this YouTuber to review, and there's no sales. So there's no sales for the first couple of weeks, first couple of months. Uh, I sell a few bottles to friends and family. I ended up doing 50% off deals on the site all the time just to push product, just to move inventory, and there was nothing. There was no movement and no forward progression with the company because I was very uneducated and uh, I just wasn't focused on building the brand. I wasn't willing to put all my time into the brand because I was in college. I wanted to go out. I wanted to have fun. And uh, I thought it would be easy to be an entrepreneur and build a business and create a business. So my next move was uh, I ended up Branching infantry, and I got sent to uh, Fort Benning, Georgia for infantry school, ranger school, airborne school. I was there for 
a little bit over a year. So while I'm in, uh, in Fort Benning, my brother is shipping out all of our orders, or all of our orders, uh, like the two a week that we had. And uh, I'm in and out of the field all the time. Like there was no time to build the business. And uh, I'm sure any other active duty entrepreneur knows the struggle of not being home to build a business or be there and intend to your baby, which is your business that you've, you've built and you're creating and you're trying to build. And it's a struggle of finding that balance of, of working for your, full, your nine to five or your 24 seven army military job and then building your, your business on the side and trying to find the balance of, of doing both because they are both full-time jobs. Um, and I definitely felt the struggle of that when I was in Fort Benning. So just gone all the time. Uh, I remember I was, uh, I was on my eight-hour pass from ranger school after, uh, after the Darby phase. And like I was in ranger school, I had this list of all the foods that I wanted to eat as soon as I got on the eight-hour pass. Because you had eight hours to get to be back. So I have like pizza and burgers and like all this stuff. And uh, as soon as I get on the eight-hour pass, I call my dad and I say, I recycled because I recycled that phase. And he was like, we're having problems with the manufacturer. So I spent those eight hours instead of eating the foods I wanted to eat, dealing with manufacturing problems, which is part of running a business. Um, I ended up recycling during the best ranger phase. It was a six-week holdover at Camp Rogers. Uh, if anyone knows where that's at, there's literally nothing there. Uh, so if, if we weren't uh, pulling details or if we weren't uh, eating, because we couldn't work out at the time because it was a, working out was a luxury at, at that phase, um, I had this right in the rain notebook. And this is the big thing I want to touch on is to create something and to build something, you have to first envision it. You have to envision what you're going to create and then take action on that. So I had this right in the rain notebook that I had all these things I wanted to do. Because when I was, when I was in ranger school and I was in the recycle, I had no computer. I had no one to, to talk to about business or, or resources to, to kind of create these ideas. It was all, what's coming off my head? What am I going to do for future products? How am I going to market? How am I going to build this business when I get out, because it's all I could think about is, is building this business that I failed over the past year and a half at that point. So I had this list I just envisioned, ideas and thoughts and processes, and uh, I wanted to rebrand the whole line and the website and, and just keep taking steps, because making moves at all times, it's how you keep creating or building your business and keeping momentum moving forward with your business. It's one of the biggest things I've learned while, while building BPN is it's what's the next move. And I'm sure any entrepreneur can agree with this. It's, you know, you come out with a new product, well, what products come out next? Or, or how are we gonna market next? Or what video are we gonna create next? It's always what is your next move? It's literally a, a game, a strategic game that you're playing to keep building and growing and staying in the forefront. So once I finished uh, Ranger School and everything, I came back and I, I really started building the business and working on the brand. Uh, and then at that point, still busy being active duty uh, entrepreneur, I get sent to Fort Hood, Texas. And this is where things really started building. This is like, I'd say, uh, a milestone of, of where the business really started to grow and pick up success. So I arrived to Fort Hood, Texas, and my unit at the time was in, in Germany on a training rotation. So I was on rear D while they were gone. And uh, I went to a few schools while I was there, while I was waiting for everyone to get back. I was uh, the unit movement officer. I don't know if anyone has ever dealt with being a UMO uh, in the military, but it's a logistical nightmare. Um, you, you're the person in charge of moving everything your unit owns to anywhere you go. So I was a UMO for NTC rotations and Korea rotations. And uh, it taught me a lot about uh, logistics in the, the civilian sector as well. But I get to Fort Hood, Texas, and I have all this free time because my unit's gone, and I decided to start a YouTube channel. By far the best decision I've ever made in my life. Now, I started this YouTube channel uh, not to build my business or to market my business, but to just document my, my fitness journey. So workout tips, nutrition tips, recipes. I use this uh, to keep me accountable. And this YouTube channel started picking up a little bit of, of attraction success, but I never pushed products. What I realized I was doing this whole time was I was building a community around my personal brand, which would ultimately create a community, a loyal following around my supplement company, that brand itself too. Uh, and you'll hear a lot of successful entrepreneurs talk about this, is 
create value for your customer base. That value in my case being a YouTube channel where I was giving them free information, recipes, nutrition tips, how to track your macros, get in shape, uh, how to work out and how to do certain lifts. I was providing this, this content for free, which was valuable, which was valuable to the, viewer, the viewers. So at this point, I'm just putting content out there with no intent of it to, to sell products, even though um, it was directly increasing sales to our, our site. Because I was getting more viewers, the site was getting more viewers. It just correlated that way. Um, so next thing that happened was I became a platoon leader, uh, infantry platoon leader, and uh, my time started getting eaten up a little bit more. We were in the field more often, we were training, and uh, I wanted to keep this YouTube channel, I wanted to keep this YouTube channel secret from everyone because uh, I was kind of just, I was a, a noob to YouTube and filming, and I was embarrassed by some of the stuff I was doing and saying. Um, so I would work out, like I would do deadlifts in like these bright neon leggings. I didn't want anyone to know that. <laughs> so uh, I walk into to PT one morning, and it's like 6.30 a.m., and uh, all I hear is my voice being played on a bunch of people's phones, and it was my platoon watching, they found my channel and they're watching my videos of me deadlifting in spandex. Uh, and everyone's laughing. And uh, it was like probably one of the most embarrassing moments. Um, and it was like right when I became a platoon leader too. So everyone found out I had a YouTube channel and it started spreading around my platoon, the company, the battalion, the brigade. Uh, and it was quite the embarrassing moment. But it's how it started reaching the military community. Which, uh, which is leverage. That's one thing that I never realized when I first started off with. Anyone with military experience or background has leverage because you have such a strong community around you. You know, you have people that are willing to support you at all times, help you no matter who you are, as long as you're a military brother or sister, you have some sort of help or someone to reach out to it at all times. It's leverage. It's, it's just leverage. It's my favorite word in that case. So I used to... Uh, I used to have like a 20 to 30 minute drive into work when I was at Port Hood, when I was a PL. So I would listen to like uh, motivational podcasts from entrepreneurs or self-talk podcasts on the way into work for like 30 minutes. So I get to work and uh, I was like the super moto like LT then where all I wanted to do is like give speeches to my platoon. My platoon's hard enough to like put me in my place. And uh, we do PT and then we all be stretching and stuff and I'd, I'd like stand up and I'd want to say something, I want to talk. Because I would literally get mad because I would see my, my soldiers and, uh, you know, they would, if you guys are in the military, you know, soldiers will talk crap about, about what they're doing because they hate their job sometimes, even though they love the organization in some cases. Um, so they're just talking crap. And it would piss me off because they didn't realize how much leverage they had. You know, I would listen to these, these podcasts and these podcasts were business podcasts that everything they were saying, I could directly correlate to my job in the Army. My platoon leader position, I could see it from a company commander's perspective, a battalion commander's perspective, every single, everything they were saying, from running a business meeting um, to CEOs talking about sweeping the floor sometimes if they had to, if they had to get involved. So I would, I would pull them in and I'd give them these talks about, like, you have this potential, you have this leverage, you need to realize what you have. And the cool part is, is that when I first started becoming a platoon leader, uh, that's when my company was failing. We were making no money. By the time I was done being a PL, um, which was this past, this past October, we were making a couple hundred thousand dollars a month. So they saw the growth from nothing to everything, and they saw how I did it. And I know so many people in, in my whole battalion were motivated by that, which I know it reached so many people. Um, that they now have, or they now realize their potential and leverage that the military can give them. They know the skill set it will create for them, the family they have, and the community they have around themselves. Uh, so that was, you know, that was a big part of something I realized was everything that I'm learning in the, in the business world, in the civilian sector, in regards to running a business and being a successful entrepreneur, is stuff that I also experienced in the military. I cannot say that more. So the company's picking up a little bit of uh, success at this point, and I get orders to go to South Korea for nine months. So I left for South Korea in, uh, 
in February of 2016, and I got back this, this past October, October, November time frame. And when I first got to Korea, um, I knew when I was getting back that it was going to be my time to transition out of the military. And I had to, I had to start planning on what I was going to do next. So I remember calling my dad uh, when I, was in, I first got to Korea, and I was like, hey, I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close BPN when I get back stateside because it's just not making enough money at this point to, to sustain myself, a family. Uh, my brother was helping out at the time. So that was my, my plan. And then I thought about it a little bit more, um, and I talked to some mentors, and I realized you know, my, my first goal I'm going to do is I'm going to try to make $10,000 a month in revenue. And that was just my first number one goal. So the way I was getting there was I was prioritizing. I, uh, I didn't watch any TV shows. I didn't watch any movies the whole way through Korea until the last week. And that was my, my goal from the beginning. So my typical schedule there was I would wake up two hours before PT, and I would do all the business stuff required because of the time difference. So I talked to manufacturers. I talked to retailers. I would do customer support stuff before PT. I would go to PT, and then I would go right to the gym and film my YouTube videos because the only time available during the day that no one was there. And there were times I, I could film at night and stuff, but like Brigade Commander and stuff were there, and I wanted to keep the YouTube channel like as hush-hush as possible because it was embarrassing sometimes. So my nine months in Korea were the most productive, it's the most productive time in my life. Um, that's where I really started growing my personal brand off of social media by just giving free information, free tips, and then indirectly, BPN, their performance nutrition started growing. So that $10,000 revenue a month goal, I hit within the first 45 days. And then I did this one video, and this one video I can, I can contribute to, to being in this position right now. And I did a video with my platoon just showing a day in the life of an infantry platoon or an infantry platoon leader. And I went to gunnery for a month, so I was away from my computer and all my social media stuff and my business. And um, I'm still looking for like jobs for, for when I get back. And I get back from, uh, from gunnery, and my social media platforms have, have doubled in those three weeks because of this one video that took off and went viral. Because of the strong military community that, that follows. People wanted to know, what, is, what does the military do? What's the day in the life like? And uh, after that, it was just building up, building up, building up. We got more traffic to the site. We had more traffic to myself. I had more opportunities to do podcast interviews and speaking events. Um, I got asked to come on different channels and re represent the military community because in social media, there's not many people that were active duty at the time that were speaking on behalf of what active duty does. And at the same time, I was, I was active duty running a business, and people saw and noticed that, and they wanted to hear more about how I was doing it. And it was prioritizing. I eliminated all, I don't want to say fun, but I eliminated the things that I didn't need to build my business while I was in Korea and focus just on building that business. And in that nine months, we grew exponentially. So towards the end of that, that career rotation, I contacted my brother who was in Pennsylvania at the time, and I asked him to move to Texas and find a distribution uh, location for us to start moving supplements out of. So he moved down to Texas, and he found a spot, and uh, we timed it up pretty well where as I was coming home, we were moving to the new place and shipping supplements out of where I opened a gym. I opened a gym there too. So we opened the gym February 4th, uh, keep in mind. So as soon as we got back from Korea, that day I landed, we went directly to the gym and we started working. Started working right away, started building the gym, building the supplements. Uh, we rebranded the whole line, so we did all new labels. We, did, uh, we kept our formulas, all new labels, rebranding of, uh, of logo design, a new website, just more professional. Always growing. I read this, this quote this one time that said, if you look back at last year's work or things you said last year and you don't cringe at it, it means you didn't grow. So like, I'll look at my videos I did last year and I'll look at videos I did a month ago and I still cringe because of some of the stuff I say. Um, so it's like, especially with social media, when you're putting stuff out there all the time, if you're not growing, it's like one of the things that I do with my YouTube videos where I try to upload every two to three days, 
I get stressed out because I try to make that video better than the previous one. Um, and like Nick saw me this morning, I was out with my gimbal outside of the, um, the hotel, like trying to get these shots of, uh, of the hotel, and I hear this guy yell, put your pants on. I was like, I was like who the hell is this asshole? And uh, you know, it's, it's always trying to outdo yourself and do better. And with that, it's gonna take more time, it's gonna take more research, it's gonna take more determination. Um, but it's one thing that, as an entrepreneur, is gonna stress you out, is putting out better content, better information, better product, a better service, always outdoing yourself than what you previously did. So the past couple of months, uh, being back in the States, we opened a gym in Austin, Texas, which is where I'm located at, we're in Austin, or right outside of Austin. We opened a gym, and we're still building a supplement company, and the supplement company grew so fast that uh, we closed the gym. The space was taken over by supplements. So our gym closes in three weeks now because we need that space for the supplement company. And the ways I did this in the past six months that I've been home, six, seven months that I've been home, it's creating value to your customer. Okay, so value that in that being information and videos or online, better customer service. So I hired more people to help me with customer service. Uh, shipping, logistics, we get all of our packages out within two hours of them coming in unless we do a huge launch. We work around the clock to get those packages out on time within, at least within 24 hours. So it's building a team too. I mean, in the military, you used to having a team. You have your platoon or your company or your battalion, your squad. You have a team that you can rely on. My team right now is me and two other people that are just working around the clock. So there's no like nine to five for us. We start at 5 a.m. and we go to 11 p.m. Uh, most of the days, which is one of the reasons we're closing the gym, just because it's just work right now. We need some sort of uh, some sort of time away. Like right now, we're we're working together and we all live together, so we're about to kill each other. So like next month, we're all moving to separate places. But it's you know you, you envision uh, you envision doing something with your life and, and working, but when your life becomes that job, it's not really a job. You know, it's it sounds super cliche. But uh, like right now, I guess this is technically work, but it's, it's not work. You know, if, if you truly enjoy it and if it's something you can create and build, uh, building something and creating something is just a great thing to be a part of. So I guess the things that I've really taken away growing and scaling and building a business while on active duty is... Um, you know, the military is truly, it's a brotherhood. It's something you're a part of, brotherhood, sisterhood. It's, uh, it's something, and I can't say enough, leverage. It creates leverage for you, for the people around you. you know, a lot of our sales, a lot of our support comes from active duty military members. Uh, and it's crazy because I'll, I'll get Snapchats from people all the time where they're on a military post, and they'll spot someone wearing one of our shirts or drinking out of one of our shaker bottles. Uh, or they'll mention like the Bear Brothers or our YouTube channel. And the power of social media is crazy. And a lot of people view social media as something bad because it's, it's used for bad things sometimes. But I'm sure people found the Raider Project through, through social media. You know, the, the reach that it has, the potential, it's a powerful thing. So social media is a powerful thing and storytelling is a powerful thing, just like I'm doing right now. I had this one friend in college who uh, I envy the way he could tell stories because he would tell these stories, and he's, he's Army as well. So he was prior service, he was enlisted before college, um, and we were roommates together, and he would tell these stories where you actually felt like you were, like, you were living the story. And he would bullshit a lot of it, because I, I would experience the same stories, and when he'd tell someone else, he'd be like, there's no way that happened. I don't remember that way. Like, I went to Vegas as a kid, and the stories he tells in Vegas, that didn't happen. <laughs> but storytelling is such a powerful thing that you can do, and a lot of my stories that I tell in my videos, that I, I create a lot of my videos, they're stories that I've experienced in the military. It's so like this video that I'm posting tomorrow while I filmed while I was here, um, it's a story that I experienced while at Ranger School. And uh, I'm dieting right now, and it kind of just made me think of like embracing the suck. It's, I'm sure if you're in the military, you embrace some sort of suck, whether that be basic training or, or some other school. Just embracing it. You know, it's part of running a business, too, or, or being in the workforce or being an entrepreneur, embracing it. 
embrace everything that happens because as it happens, as it sucks, you grow from that. So my biggest takeaway, like I said, it's you have leverage as a, uh, a service member in the community, whether that's the active duty com uh, community, reserve, National Guard, and the civilian sector because people will respect what you have to say because of your experience, what you've done, or for serving the country. So that's my speech. That's my story. And uh, I really appreciate the opportunity to come out and speak today.